Hello, and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program Hardcore with Tabernation Interplanetary. This is not part of the main series, but a little bit of an aside, an appendix. Um, I've had a few requests for a video specifically about the mods that are being used in this series. This is a modded install of Kerbal Space Program we're using, and when I'm describing the mods that I'm using, I would say I'm using the USI Life Support and Colonization mods, I'm using Probes Before Crew, I'm using Strategia, and I'm using uh, a couple of contract packs. It's a very short list, um, and yet, somehow, if you actually look at my installed mods, you end up with 60 mods installed. So how does that happen? Well, let's take a look at what those mods actually do. Here's all 60 of them. The first thing I'm going to do is realize that a whole bunch of these are just dependencies. All of these mods highlighted in green, they're libraries, tools that other mods I've installed require. So if you install all the other mods we're going to talk about later, you'll end up with these pretty much installed by default. And if you installed only these, they wouldn't actually affect your game really at all. So we can ignore them. Then our list looks like this. I mean, that's already a lot more manageable. Now of these, a bunch of them are what I call quality of life mods. These are mods that don't really affect gameplay. They don't affect the physics engine. They don't really have, they don't have any parts associated with them, but they add UI elements, tools to the game that make it a little uh, more accessible to play because there's so much going on. Um, I'm going to highlight a few of these. First is Kerbal Engineer Redux, which you've certainly seen if you've watched any of the videos. It's the mod that provides us all these readouts that you see, tell us things like how fast we're going, what biome we're over, how much thrust to weight ratio our vessel has, the details of our orbit, all of those things that we really want to have available at a glance. The other big one that I always install every time I play Kerbal Space Program is Kerbal Alarm Clock. When you describe it, it doesn't seem like much, but it makes a really big difference. Uh, first off, it gives you the option to warp to a lot of points in your orbit that you might not otherwise have, want, have been able to warp to automatically, so it saves you from fiddling with the time warp settings manually. But also, it lets you, for example, in this vessel, I've got an intercept with the moon. It's going to take me four hours to get there. Um, especially with life support, we may not want to just fast forward time ahead. Imagine an interplanetary intercept, it's going to take months. We click on the alarm clock and add an alarm. SOI change is there automatically. There we go. Now, we go back to the space center and we're doing whatever. Who knows? We're in the VAB, we're building a new rocket. It's a new day. Wait, time is slowing down on its own. We're coming out of time warp. We haven't done anything. And here comes Kerbal Alarm Clock. Hey, remember that moon intercept? It's happening. Do you want to jump to the ship? Yes, we do. Just in time, switch into the moon's sphere of influence. We've been reminded to jump back to the ship and even provided a handy link that takes us straight to it. So that's super useful. We're going to make a lot of use of that. I want to talk about another one of these mods we're using, which is Transfer Window Planner. Basically, I think of it as a, an add-on for Kerbal Alarm Clock, because it lets us say things like, for example, we want to go to Duna. Now there's going to be good times and bad times to launch for Duna. There's going to be places in its orbit when it would take two to three times as much Delta V to get there as it would during an optimal launch window. Here we go. It says that we should depart on day 233. Tells us how long it's going to take. Shows us if we're willing to spend more Delta V, when we could launch, if we wanted to go faster, how much Delta V it would take us. But let's go for the absolute optimal launch and add it straight to the Kerbal Alarm Clock. Now, look at Kerbal Alarm Clock. We've got our Duna transfer. They're already in the list, and we can go about our career. And when the day comes, then it's time for us to launch our Duna vessel. Herbal alarm clock will remind us. 
We've also added Quick SAS, which we're not even using yet. Uh, but when it comes to delicate flying, especially on planetary surfaces, with lots of takeoff and landing, if we're doing biome hopping, it's really useful to be able to bind things like prograde and radial out to hotkeys. A janitor's closet, which basically clears up um, unnecessary icons on the UI that mods can add. And then we've got we've got Waypoint Manager, which lets us add waypoints in the game and see them in our UI. And for waypoints that are already in the game, like when you have to go to a specific location, you can't usually see the little push pins when you're in your flight view, only your map view. And that's a pain in the butt. So Waypoint Manager solves that for us. Flexible docking is maybe the only mod on this list that actually changes gameplay at all. Docking is not that hard um, in space. Once you get the hang of it, it's actually surprisingly straightforward. But on a surface, like if you're building a base and you want to dock two parts of your base together, if the surface is at all uneven, then even if you get the docking lined up right, once you dock, every time you switch back to that base, you're running the risk that KSP is going to see part of your base clipped into the surface, launch everything into space, explosion, no fault of your own. Flexible docking lets you sort of make little adjustments on the fly without EVA construction or anything like that to get the angle just right so that your base sits even on uneven ground. Um, science alert, you've also probably seen if you've watched any of the videos. It's the one with the uh, pop-up that lets you see what science experiments you can currently run in new biomes. We've got uh, crowdsource science, which just adds some uh, better, less repetitive science descriptions. It's purely flavor text and Kerbal Inventory for All, which is just a mod that helps other mods connect to the stock Kerbal Inventory and uh, EVA construction system. So that's it for these. And again, if you install all of these mods and all of the mods we've already grayed out, all you've really changed for the most part, except for flexible docking, is the KSP UI. Um, everything you do is still going to be, in uh, air quotes, 100% stock. And that same go the same thing goes for our next category of mods. These are the purely visual mods. Uh, KSP is a pretty beautiful game these days, even in stock, but it benefits, I think, quite a lot from adding a few mods that give it tweaks where it needs it. So I'm going to show you an example of the same mission profile. One run with no mods, and one run same ship, but with just the visual mods. And you can see the differences. We've got uh, environmental visual enhancements, Eve, which adds uh, clouds and some other Sort of atmospheric effects. We've got Real Plume, which gives you prettier engine exhausts. We've got Restock, gives you prettier ships. And we've got Scatterer, which gives you prettier, basically light effects, light rays. And all combined, it's not a complete overhaul of the graphics, but it makes a pretty big difference. So now if we take those out of consideration, what we've got left here are the actual mods that are changing the way we play the game. Now, when I, at the top, when I listed off the mods that I'm using, again, I only listed four or five. So why are there still about 15 or so here? Well, mostly because one functional unit can be spread across multiple mods. So if we look at them, broken down by category, we get this. Contract packs, US Island Sport Constellation, Probes before crew, strategia, and then finally, stock alike station parts. Well, these are the big ones that matter. Let's take a look at them one at a time. Probes before crew is a complete overhaul of the tech tree and science progression system. It does what it says on the tin and pretty much forces you to send autonomous probes to space, to the moon, eventually to other planets before you can reasonably send a Kerbal there which has the side effect of making it so that you have to care a lot more about ComNet and your relay satellites and uh, having a persistent connection, especially because we're playing with the difficulty settings where if we lose a connection back to KSC, our unmanned probes are completely uncontrollable. Um, it also 
reduces the science rewards from science experiments pretty much across the board um, with the intent that you won't be unlocking the entire tech tree by the time you uh, reach Minus, which can often be the case in vanilla, even with your science reward settings slider set all the way down. Uh, Strategia is a complete revamp of the administration building, adding all of these new strategies and getting rid of the vanilla ones, which are pretty much useless. Um, the administration building was a real waste of uh, real estate in KSC and stock. We've curated a list of contract packs from various mod authors to replace the vanilla contracts so that as we are relying on contracts to keep our funds level afloat, we don't find ourselves in the position of having to do the same repetitive vanilla contracts over and over again. Um, there are a lot of contract packs to choose from. If you look on CCAN, I'm pretty happy with these ones that we've got. And that brings us to USI. I could go on for hours, and we'll probably have to do at least one more video specifically on this mod pack at some point in the future. But basically, to keep your Kerbals alive and happy, you need to give them spacious accommodations and a never-ending pipeline of supplies. You can just buy supplies in the VAB and take them with you. There's 4,500. That sounds like a lot. We want to start filling this up with Kerbals, sending it to Duna or Elu. That runs out pretty fast. So in the end, what you want to do is bring with you a way to make supplies yourself. But to do that, you need fertilizer. And of course, you can bring fertilizer with you, but if you're going to go somewhere far away, like Duna or Elu, you're going to want a way to make fertilizer yourself. So to do that, you start to drill into the intensive resource management and manufacturing system that's included with USI colonization. Just like in the stock game, how you can drill ore and turn into fuel, USI, you drill all kinds of resources, like minerals, and turn them into all sorts of things, like fertilizer. Of course, obviously, your drilling and manufacturing to turn minerals into fertilizer is going to require maintenance of its own, and you're going to need material kits, specialized parts, and of course you can load them up in the VAB and bring them with you. But if you're going somewhere like Elu, you're going to want to make them yourself. Those are going to require different resources. Never-ending cycle. But for now, let's load this fertilizer onto a rocket and take it somewhere that is needed. And finally, stock like station parts, which is a parts mod that is what it says, all station parts, base parts, and I almost think of it as being a natural extension of USI life support and colonization. The stock alike station parts pack has been designed to play out of the box beautifully with USI. You can make beautiful stations that look like this one. So that's that. I hope that that answered any questions you have. And if you have any more questions about the mods we're using, then by all means, drop a comment below and uh, I'll respond if I can.